Okay, good morning. My name is Maurizio Latini and I'm working for ECMWF. And I'm going to talk about the European Flood Awareness System. First of all, some minor information about ECMWF. We are in an independent intergovernmental organization established in 1975 with 22 member states and 12 cooperating states. Uh, the ECMWF is it's turned 40 in uh, 2015, has more than 288 employees and uh, collaboration with uh, a lot of research institutes. And it provides a lot of uh, more than 40 million observations analyzed every day. Within uh, the ECMWF, we are hosting uh, uh, Copernicus uh, Emergency Management Services. Within the Copernicus Emergency Management Services. We are running the, the IFAS, which is a part of uh, uh, the, the Copernicus program for the, the, the flood uh, uh, monitoring all over Europe. Why IFAS? Because uh, in, uh, within Europe, the most uh, severe flooding are uh, transboundaries. So sometimes uh, these uh, flooding events are leading to incoherent decisions between uh, uh, neighborhood states. So uh, uh, at the beginning, the, the European Commission decided to, to have this uh, transboundary uh, operational system to help the, the member states to, to have better information about uh, ongoing flooding. This is the, the, it was the idea behind IFAS, which is the first uh, European operational monitoring system and uh, can uh, send out uh, early warning uh, uh, notification up to 10 days in advance. Plus, uh, it sends out uh, to the partners and the European uh, Emergency Response Coordination Center a daily overview on about uh, the flooding um, situation all over Europe. So as I said, it's a, it's a probabilistic system. It's operational, so it means that it runs 24-7, 365 days a year. It produces twice a day forecast, one at 00, zero the other one at 12, and has uh, more than 60 registered partners. And uh, these partners receive uh, observation, so, sometimes flood notifications, and can give back to us uh, feedback on the performances of the system. The IFAS itself is a consortium, so it, comp it is composed from different uh, research and uh, operational centers. We are ECMWF, we are uh, part of the computational center, so it means that uh, we are executing the forecast and we are running the information system. There is the dissimulation center, which is formed by the SMHI, the Swedish Meteor Meteorological Institute, the Rijkswater Stat. Uh, in the uh, Netherlands and the Slovak uh, Hydrological Meteorolo uh, Meteorological oh. Institute. And uh, this, this dissemination center is uh, analyzing the, the information that IFAS is providing and then uh, decide if to send out or not a not flood notification. Then we have a consortium for uh, the hydrological uh, collection center, which is in Spain. So we have the and they are collecting historical and real-time uh, river discharge. And uh, we have a meteorological data collection center, which is based in uh, Germany, which collect uh, real-time uh, meteorological data across Europe. In IFAS, uh, we have uh, three types of users. We have the anonymous users that can access uh, no real-time data. It means forecasts that are older than 30 days, and they have uh, access to limited uh, amount uh, of uh, information. Then we have uh, the registered users, which are not forecast, uh, that can access all the real-time data and information, but they cannot uh, receive or issue notification. Then we have uh, the, the registered users uh, and uh, the, the forecasted users, they have access to all the IFAS uh, infrastructure and they can send out notifications. So this is the, more or less the, the IFAS uh, architecture for the 
web part in which we receive the, the forecast. We store the, the forecast in, uh, in GIS databases. And in we have two types. Uh, actually, we have three types of database. We have a GIS database. We have, a, we have an SOS uh, database. We have an orchestration layer, which is mainly Django and Python. We produce uh, 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 service, uh, WMS uh, services that we uh, deliver to the to the end users uh, through OGC standards. We have uh, an authentication service based uh, on O2. So it's uh, the the software that we are using. It's uh, for the backend part is uh, Postgres uh, SQL and PostGIS Map Server for the. Mm, WMS uh, generation, Django, and uh, Drupal for. Uh, in the front end, we are using Angular, Leaflet, again Drupal. Everything is dockerized and orchestrated with uh, Kubernetes. So, as I was telling, it, it would be nice if I can log. I, I can. I will try. I don't want to mess up anything, but I, I want to try to have a live demo. OK. I'm because it's better to, to show if the internet is working. Otherwise, I have. OK. I have a backup plan. No, no, maybe, don't worry. I have maybe a I can connect. If you can find, maybe yeah. Is okay. Accept. Okay, let's try. Okay. Let me log in. So we have, uh, we are producing uh, more or less uh, 30 layers a day, which we are delivering through the web interface. And we are organizing layers in different categories. As you can see, flood summary layers, hydrological layers, initial conditions, flash flood, and a, b a bunch of other layers, plus the static ones. Every layer. The, for example, the, the okay, we don't have any. Let me go back in time where every layer is produced twice a day, and we host uh, uh, historical layers so we can go back in time up to 10 years ago. So if I'm going to a situation where we have uh, maybe more floods, okay. So the, this layer here is the reporting points, uh, two years uh, and five years period, which is the one used by the forecaster to issue notification. So I, how does it work? Every, at zero, zero, and at 12 every day, this layer is produced, is put into the interface, and then the forecaster is analyzing the layer. So through just clicking on, uh, on a point, you can get all the hydrological information for the point. So that we have uh, the, the discharge hydrographs, uh, the return period hydrographs, uh, the upstream rainfall, and all kind of, and then the persistence table. So based on this information, the forecaster are, are analyzing the the result of the model, and they can decide if they can issue or not a notification. Some, let me go back to the presentation. It's 
So as I was saying, we have the reporting points, which is uh, points in the river network uh, that are, uh, which the, the threshold are two, one greater than two years return period, the other one greater than five years return period. The, the points can be queried. So these are already shown. Then we have uh, flash floods reporting points, which where the we every day we are issuing a, a flash flood notification because this uh, the flash flood is much more difficult to be. I'm I'm not an hydrologist, so I don't know how to explain it a little bit better. But uh, this kind of uh, mm, notification, the, this kind of reporting points are really difficult to catch. So we have a an, a different model to to generate this, and uh, they are pro produced twice a day. Uh, like the other ones, and the uh, and, uh, notification are issued again using this, this layer. This is the, the flash flood uh, symbology, and this is the, what you get if you query the, the layer. We have another type of layer. This is uh, based on uh, observation com that comes from uh, radar, and it's generated every 15 minutes, and it shows uh, real time uh, almost real-time uh, uh, precipitation-based analysis. And this is how, this is how it looks like. This we use uh, an, a different approach to, to generate this. Uh, we have an in-house uh, WMS uh, uh, service generator, which is which reading uh, the, the NetCDF and is generating uh, through the DCM WF uh, easy chart uh, suite. This, uh, this layer here, which is an animation, by the way, so it can be animated and uh, the, the, the user can see the, how the precipitation are evolving. We are, as I said, we are issuing notification. Notification are divided in three categories, formal, informal, and flash flood notifications. So these are the parameters that the forecaster are using to issue formal or informal notification. A notification itself, it's only an email that is sent to the partner. So the partner can check the forecast, can check the IFAS forecast, can check his forecast, and then they can decide if they have to take action. So IFAS uh, notification are just, uh, let's say, uh, it's not, uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's a, in a, a, a helping tool it's not like the official one. So it's up to the partner this, to decide uh, if they want uh, to take an action based on our notifications. If the criteria for sending notification are not uh, met for the formal notification, we, the, the, the forecaster can send an informal notification, which means that, uh, okay, something is going to happen, but it's not going to be maybe a flooding, but take care and uh, monitor this uh, particular basin. And then we have the flash flood notifications, which are the, the most, uh, uh, let's say, issued ones, because uh, we have a lot of, uh, especially during winter time, we have a lot of flash flood uh, notifications. And the criteria are here, and, uh, and they, these are issued based on administrative regions, not for basins. Plus, uh, every day at uh, 8 a.m., we are sending uh, uh, the daily, the flooding daily report to the emergency and response coordination center. So it's a, it's basically it's a, a summary of what had happened until the the previous forecast. So the user that receives notification, what does it see is on the on the web? You have. Uh, the, the active notification that are listed, and for each notification, you can get uh, the, the notification that has been sent to the partner. So you have uh, all these, these hydrological parameters, and the name of the forecaster who issued the notification, so if the, the partner needs further more information. Plus, uh, we can query on the notification itself. Mm -hmm. The forecaster has this, uh, let's say, dashboard to, to check which are the notifications that are 
actually at the moment active and they can decide if they can deactivate the notification. Once the notification is deactivated, it goes into this other panel, which is a, a summary of what, what have happened in the, in the last uh, day. And uh, as I was saying, the partner that is receiving the formal notification has the ability and the possibility to, to give us back a feedback. So the feedback is, uh, is then returned to the system and we are calculating how well the system has performed. So how precise was the, was the notification issue. So as, as you can see, we have a, like a coloring system. So it means red, it's really bad. So that we issued a notification to a partner, but the flooding wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, happening. And then we have a kind of a rating system to, 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 to see how well we, we perform it. The daily review, I don't, I don't think you can, can you read it? Anyway, it's the situation uh, that, uh, that what, what, uh, what was happening before. So in this case, no formal notification was uh, issued and uh, only a few flash flood notification were sent to the, to the partners. So this is the, what the, the, the European Emergency Response Center is receiving every day. Users, registered users can uh, have uh, their own dashboard so they can create their own uh, viewers to, to check out, to, to monitoring the, the, the situation. And uh, if, you, if I have time, I can show you how it works on the, on the website. Sharing data. We are currently using uh, OGC uh, web services to share data within uh, for partners and non-registered users. So we have two OGC services. We have uh, WMS services for uh, uh, real-time and non-real-time data and uh, sensor observation services for uh, <coughs> post-processed reverse discharge. SOS services is only accessible by the partners. So they have to be registered and then they will get a partner and they will get a password. WMS services is also accessible from non-registered users. In this case, they will only have access to uh, no real-time forecasts, so only forecasts that are older than 30 days. But it's constantly updated. So if you connect today, you will get uh, the, the forecast up to the 30th of uh, Ju July. We offer also a service for downloading the data. So we have two types of data download. One is through the climate, uh, the Copernicus Climate Data Store, which is the, the easiest way to get access to get data. So it's simply you go to the CDS, you register, and then you can download the IFAS uh, data. This, in this case, the, the data is uh, available in uh, GRIP2 format or NetCDF. The other way is through the ECMWF has this uh, huge archive of meteorological informa uh, information, which is called the Meteorological Archival and Retrieval System, or MARS, which is a tape system. In this case, you, have to, you need to be registered into the ECMWF uh, 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 within ECMWF to get the, the password for getting the, the MARS. Uh, and uh, you, you need to have a little bit of programming skill to download the data. So these are the two way of uh, downloading the, the, our data. Of course, it's a, it's a raw data, so it's not the, but uh, slowly we are, we, are, we are now discussing with the partners if the, we can also provide the, the, the models and the, the data that we elaborated. So uh, last but not least, we are currently looking for uh, developers. And uh, this slide is not exactly, it's not really correct because uh, the, the deadline is the, the 16th of September. So the, the date has been extended yesterday. So if you are interested, you can uh, visit us uh, at our booth on the, on the main uh, theater room and you can get more information. 
I think I finished. So if you have a Thank you for the presentation. Um, questions? You thought using the feedback loop to train your model, like you show that you have a feedback loop based on notifications. Uh, we are yes or no. We are using the feedback to train uh, the modeler, <laughs> not the model. So uh, we are getting uh, the, the the responses. We are analyzing that. Well, the, the the scientists are analyzing that, and then they are training the the, the model but it's not uh, an automatic process. Also because sometimes the, the, the feedback uh, has to be, and it's, it's an open uh, questionnaire, so it has to be analyzed in, uh, to, to understand what was the, plus we have a, to, to, we have a, a, a JIRA system for, a, which is uh, every time you, I, I haven't showed, if you, uh, if I have a, just a second, when okay when there is a point here the forecaster or whoever is uh, is looking at the point can report an error for the point which means uh, that sometimes uh, the the data is is not correct or uh, the the so this is what we we use to to correct the issue sometimes that the the returning period uh, are wrong or something like that so we have uh, this form here Oops. And you can you can see which one was the the main problem, or you can enter in just what you want. And we receive whenever someone is entering this uh, this form, we receive a, a ticket. So we analyze it. So if it's a critical error, we are tending, we tend to, to fix in. Uh, so we rerun. If it's uh, if it's for example the model is uh, is is uh, out to outputting uh, wrong data, we are rerunning the forecast and then we are publishing the new one. So it's almost in real time correction. If it's a critical error. Okay. Thank you. I think we have to break here. Uh, we still have four minutes in order to change rooms. And we'll start with the second presentation at 9.30.